Hey guys, Lex Dot here. And I'm Bad Tracy. Bad Bad Blues. The tooziest of the two of us. You can honestly keep the same intro from last time. That's this is good. the best movies of 2019. Yeah, we know we're late. It's almost April, or it is April whenever this comes out. But um, we just did the worst. Go watch it. Yeah, I there was a lot. There was a lot that I I was waiting to do this until I watched them because I was like I feel like they will be on my list and a lot of them are. We'll get right into you it. Still going first? Sure, I can go first. Okay. Now we're in the same order now. Yeah, right? counting down. Fourteen. Yeah, we're not starting at the best movie ever. So we're at fourteen. Yes. Okay. Spoiler, Spoiler alert for literally for everything we talk about. The movies. At fourteen, I have. Marriage Story, directed by Noah Baumbach. Um, this narrowly, na narrowly, narrowly, narrowly beat out Booksmart, directed by Olivia. I think, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I know how to spell it. I just know how to say it. Well, if you remi were reminded of the spelling, you could narrowly. Yeah, I got it. This was a very, very, very good movie. Brutally sad and depressing. So sad to the point I don't think I'll probably ever watch it again. Sounds like my sex But game. it is just so, not, so did, good. Did you catch very, joke very there? good movie. Yeah, I did. Okay, you talked also, some of the too. best performances I've ever seen from Adam Driver and ScarJo. Get better than Clansman, though. Yeah, I'm done. My number 14 of the best oh, movies man. in 2019. Uh, ever in 2019, ever in 2019, <laughs> yes. is Toy Story 4. Huh? Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of the Toy Story franchise. They don't hit me that Toy much. Toy Story 2? I remember, I've only seen Toy Story 2 once, I, I think, and I just don't remember not liking Favorite. it. I gotta rewatch it. I don't know, something about it. Like, I always wanted all the toys, but, uh, because I, as a kid, thought they would be real. Like, only those specific toys, if they were in Toy Story, would be real. I have a Woody. That's it. Uh, but yeah, I'm just like here. He's cool. Yeah, I, mean, I had one way back. I still have my Woody though. Um, my girlfriend gives me a Woody. I just say yeah, I'm not the biggest Toy Story fan, so it's not great. It's a pretty good ending though. The weird Bo Peep retcon was strange though. Oh, Keanu Reeves was amazing in it. Yeah, he was great. I don't think it'll be the ending though. I think they can continue it. I don't think they were. I think they will. I, we're pretty sure they'll never touch it again. Mm, we'll see about that. No, at number th at number thirteen, this is one I watched very recently. Uncut Gems, directed by the Softy Brothers. You it like I an actually hour ago. just watched it tonight. Yeah, it was very, very good. I'm. This is one I'm not gonna spoil. Uh, should we not spoil our best ones? Yeah, it's not spoil okay, the best. Okay, so we don't even have to say spoiler. I one. mean, spoiler because I spoil Toy Story. <laughs> okay, <laughs> after Toy Story, no spoilers. So Uncut Gems. It's just like I think I like I said to, I said this to Dad. I think it's probably Adam Sandler's best movie ever. He's just like a high-strung jeweler trying to get a gem, and Kevin Garnett's in there, and it's like half a basketball movie kind of. It's very weird. It is just high tension all the time. It's very very good. Probably his best performance ever. And I thought the funniest thing was his voice in it. To me, sounds like his one friend. It's in all his movies. Oh. You know, or, I, I can't even, I don't know the, the guy's real name. He's the, he's the box squared head where he talks like this. He's the, uh, <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Doesn't he do the raping in Bill Kill Bill? Yes. Yeah. Don't remind me. Well, that's the one that you always know to pull. Cross-eyed guy. Yes. Uh, my number 13 is Noel. I think this was the first Disney Plus wow. original thin, right? It was like the first uh, the movie that dropped. Maybe Lady in the Tramp was out I think first. it was on there. No, it was Day of Launch, I'm pretty sure. It was yeah, second Day of Launch or something. I think so. It was really good. I love this. We did this for our 25 Days of Christmas. Yeah, I thought it was just fun. So go watch that, my review of it. I think there, I may have even given it two stars. I really loved it. I think I gave it four. I love the twist of everything. We said no spoilers for the best, so go watch. If you want spoilers, go watch our 25 Days of Christmas giveaway. Not giveaway. We didn't give anything away. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm thinking of Ellen's 25 yeah. 12, 12 Days of Giveaways. Uh, 25 12 Days of Giveaways. 25, <laughs> 25, 25. times she re 25 times she reminds you about the 20... The 12 no, she's days. doing 25 12 Day Giveaways. It's just once a month. No. Yeah. Once a month for two years and a month. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, okay. So she could do two, two a month and move, move on to 12. <laughs> okay. And number 12, I have 1917, directed by Sam Mendes. This was another one I watched recently. Like yesterday. Yeah. I think it was yesterday? Two days ago? No, it was yesterday. It was Wednesday. 
Well, no, no, no. It was Tuesday because I talked to Zen about it on Wednesday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last three days have just blended together to me. Yeah. Because you've not working. Because I am unemployed. <laughs> uh, 1970 is a very, very good war film. Um, and I really like that it was like two continuous shots the entire movie. So you can, if you're out to look for him, you can tell where the transitions are. Um, and all the practical effects were really well done. I really like the casting. And there's some uh, pretty fun cameos. Not fun, because it's... None of the movie's fun. It's just horrific. But there's some nice cameos in there. So that's nice. My number 12 is The Lonely Island Presents The Unauthorized Bash Brothers Experience. This is the one that I don't think should be on the list because it's not a movie. It's, 30, it's a short film. It's 30 minutes of music videos, but it's incredible, and I cannot stop listening to it. it. It's a been musical out for a long time. short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been out for a few months, and I've not stopped listening to it. That's why it's so, so high. Funny. It's so good. <laughs> um, did you see No Effects' new song that dropped today? The Odd, the odd Edition? Yeah. No, I didn't, yeah. It's just from La La Land. And the whole music video is just scenes from La La. It's like, you don't have the rights to this. They just dropped La La Land. It's very Weird. strange. Me? Yeah. And number 11, I have Togo, directed by nice. Erickson Core. Really? No, I didn't see so. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, when did you watch this? <laughs> so Togo, uh, this is the first Willem Dafoe movie I have on my list. And it is about, it's basically the live action Balto. Um, which you love Balto. Which I love Balto. And this is the true story of Balto gets all the credit but Balto didn't really run the whole thing because it was Togo who did it, but Togo um, broke his paw or something. I, I can't oh, so remember. it's in the same universe. Yeah, it is Balto. It's Balto is oh. a true story. So, yeah, this is, like, he, 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 he does over movie. 100 miles mm. of in the harsh winter. What's better? Togo or Balto? Yeah. But Togo. Really? Yeah. And you've rid on the Balto train. Uh, no, you've rid on the Balto sled yeah, for, for years. Very, yeah, because <laughs> I, think, I think they're both five-star movies, but Togo is just... If Togo, is, Togo had, if Togo is animated, still better. Or Balto still, because Balto is like your top five favorite anime. Films, the right? reason Togo is better than Balto is because it's real dogs, oh. and as someone who loves animals, just seeing those doggies do these great things, I'm like, look, look, look. And, and he hates Togo at the start. He's like, you dumb mutt. And at the end, he's like, Togo, don't you die, don't you die, Togo. Oh, it's great. I don't know if he dies. That's not a spoiler alert, I guess. It's a dog movie. Of course the dog dies. It is not a spoiler. Think it's of also, any dog how movie. How old is that story? Yeah, it's it's a true story and it's from the 1917 or 14 it's or like something. like people getting mad at me for spoiling Great Gatsby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, whenever I was <laughs> mad. <laughs> you shouldn't have been. I never read it in school. <laughs> there you go. Everyone knows it. 11. Number 11 is Shazam. This is a lot high, yeah, you know, because yours is probably number one or something. Uh, I it's a good DC movie. It's the best I, DC well, it's movie. It's still not the best. Uh, I think it's when I still put this under Birds of Prey. I had a good time with Birds of Prey. Well, I'll, I'll say right now, Birds of Prey currently because we can't see any fucking movies in 2020. Birds of Prey is probably my favorite movie of 2020. That Bloodshot? No, Bloodshot was bad. <laughs> Is there anything else? Have we seen anything else? I've seen Netflix ones, and most of them have been bad. I saw the fucking Mark Wahlberg one where he's a detective who went to prison. That was fucking stupid. Oh, that Spencer Confidential? Yeah. Um, I watched some other Netflix one I'm, that I I'm really mad at Mark for. Wahlberg right now. I'm very mad. I got Pete some... Davidson's Netflix special might be my favorite thing of this year so far. I got so... <laughs> I'm so unhappy with every decision in Hollywood right now. Okay, well, let's get back Mark to Mark Wahlberg's Char fucking Sully in Uncharted. Jesus Christ. <sighs> That movie's canceled now again. Good. I never even got to talk about Shazam. Oh, talk about Shazam. You just ranted about how good it was. You raved about how good it was. Yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, the mom scene is really a bummer. It's an integral part of the story. And you're like, no, no, no. Scene. I was just thinking. I was thinking of how it plays on the comic because I just read the oh yeah, yeah, the Shazam yeah. comic that the movie's based yeah. on. Yeah. Which is just Justice League panels. It's just issues from Justice yeah. League because I guess I guess Shazam was a back feature. Yeah. Like Je Jeff Johns would write Justice League and then the back feature would be Shazam. Weird. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. It's up there for probably my favorite DCU films. But like I said, it's probably three because I mean Birds of Prey is probably right above it. And then Man of Steel. There is no way Man of Steel's better than Shazam. What the fuck? How many how many civilians does Shazam kill in the movie Shazam? None. How many does Superman you that one kill? <laughs> yeah. Goddamn a million. <laughs> but would you agree that uh, Henry Cavill is the best Superman we've ever seen? 
Live action? Yeah. No, it's Christopher Reeve. You still think Christopher Reeve's Batman? Yeah, he looks... He is Superman. It feels very good. And he's you, not... you put Christopher Reeve in a modern-day Superman movie yeah. with an actual Superman, like, character yeah. type, not just yeah. Henry Cavill being Give sad. Give us Baron Sunday. You know? Christopher Reeve would still nail it out of the park. Also, Brandon Routh. It, like, every... I think there hasn't... I don't think there's ever been, like, a bad casting for Superman. They all look like Superman. I don't think George Reeve looked like no. Superman. That was just a And period. then Dean Cain had Dean weird Kane hair for it. Dean Cain so Superman... It's crazy. I don't think the new guy looks like no, him I very much. No, I hate the new guy. Dirk, Kirk, Ta Tyler, or whatever his name is. I don't is. know his name. Suit's stupid. Yeah. And number 10, I have I Lost My Body, directed by Jeremy Kleipen? Kleipen? I don't know how to say it. Did Disney rename Onward? <laughs> no. So I Lost My Body is a French animated film that was released onto Netflix. And I That's thought joke, though. it was just beautifully animated. Just one of the most beautiful animated films I've ever seen. And I'm going to just tell you a little bit of the plot, okay? Because it's wild. So it's about a kid who drops out of college and he starts working as a carpenter, okay? Well, like, Jesus. he stays at the lab late one day and his boss is like, hey, you know, be safe or whatever. Well, his sleeve gets caught and he, boom, buzz saws his hand off, okay? His hand, they don't find it, okay? He's in the hospital or whatever and he's like, oh man, my fucking hand, you know? And, well, then the hand comes alive, and it's skittering all across the city, climbing up uh, fire skates, fighting pigeons, just to try and get back to its body, because I lost my body. It's great. It was very, very good. I thought that was going to go differently. I it was very was moving. like, hey, stay in the lab. And he's like, no problem, boss. And then he's like, well, i got to get some work done. So he shrinks down real quick. And then a bad guy comes in to steal stuff from the lab. And he goes, sneak attack. And he grows big again. He goes, gotcha. And his hand no, has I... been cut off. So he takes his hand off and he throws it at the guy. And the guy's like, oh. Did you? Uh, number 10? Yes. Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. Really good movie. You did not like it. You have that higher than Shazam. That's yeah, insane. It's a really good movie. I do You're not insane think so. for not liking it very much. I thought much. it was fun. It's a really good movie. It's not even the best Pokemon movie. Everyone everyone at work like refused to see it. Like, I just don't think I can see Deadpool it talking really as good. Pikachu. It looks really good. He was he's acted in stuff before Deadpool. I know. And it's they, like, yeah, all my coworkers act like Deadpool's the only thing he's known um, for now. It's like Green Lantern much? Come on, my favorite movie when I was 10? You mean 11? Because it came out... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with 8. I thought that's too early. I'll go with 10. Right. Um, yeah, it's, I thought it was really good. And like the only problem is Mewtwo has teeth. Not a spoiler alert because that's in the trailer. Okay. No one complained about that. Everyone complained about Sonic. Sonic, we saw that this year. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really better good. than Birds of no, Prey. I don't think so. I don't know what I did. Have you seen this apartment on Zillow.com? Did I show you the, the pitch meeting? <laughs> no. I'll show it to you right after. And number nine, I have Avengers Endgame, directed At by nine? the Russo Brothers. At nine. My top ten is bangers. <sighs> like, nine. straight bangers. At nine? At nine. Ugh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what can I say? It's Avengers Endgame. It's yeah. the culmination. Just save it. Save it when I want to. I'm going to talk about it. It's the culmination of the Just save it. Just save it. Just save yeah, it. Yeah, Let yeah. me talk about it when I get to it. Um, well, should I say why it's so low? No. No. Because I got bangers from here on out. Number nine for me is Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. I'm going to tell yeah. you a funny story about Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. This was in my top 14. Yeah. I literally took it out. For Uncut Gems? No. Oh. I, it was in. I like. I took other stuff out for oh. this. Okay. But then I went, it doesn't make sense yeah. without everything else out. And I, I just went, nope. So, uh, funny story about James Bond, my last day of work before I got laid off. I got laid off, and I didn't get fired, but you wouldn't know the distance. Difference. You must <laughs> add up. I, I, was, okay. I was standing at the computer. I wouldn't know the distance. <laughs> standing at the computer. Because here's getting fired, and here's getting laid off. I was sitting at the desk type in. And my manager comes in, she goes, she throws the thin of paper down, and she goes, I need to talk to you about something. I have a grief with you. I went, yeah. And she goes, Jay and Silent Bob, I just watched it. It's horrible. <laughs> I went, what? And she's like, I was like, it wasn't great. I was like, but yeah. I gave that five stars, uh, I think. She, the reason she brought it up to me is because, one, she knew about the premiere we went to. Yeah. We saw the premiere. Two, 
in my job interview a year ago, I mentioned how big of a Kevin Smith fan I was. Okay. So she knows how important this movie was to me. And she's like, just not funny. And she just ranted about it for two minutes, and she's like, now you're sad. And I was like, yeah, I didn't think it's like the perfect movie, because you have to see everything. And then she realized that I thought she never actually got my review of it. She just knew I went I to see it. I remember when we saw it, there yeah. were a couple jokes that you even were like, yeah, I didn't get those parts, because I haven't yeah, seen I Chasing mean, Amy or Dog. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like she realized that she had to actually. And there's no red state. Yeah. Nothing to do. With I know that. red state's so good. And they put no red state in. <laughs> because it's not a few skew. Uh, she realized that she'd only known I saw it and really never got a review. So she's like, "Oh, you don't think it's the best movie ever?" I was like, "Oh, it's pretty good though." Uh, yeah. So I thought it's it's Jane Silent Bob reboot. It's I even said to her because she was just like, "I don't I don't know." I was like, "Yeah, it's just Strike Back," which is fine. But same movie. Yeah, it's just the same movie. So. And number eight. I have The Lighthouse, directed by Robert Eggers. Same one. We don't have the same one. No. You haven't seen this. The, the Willem Dafoe. It's Willem Dafoe That's what I did and it, yeah. The Batman. It's Green Goblin and Batman together for the first time and the same time. And it is a... I'm starting to think that half the movies on my top 14 aren't going to be on your... aren't going to be on the rest of your list. I'm really disappointed. Maybe. I don't know. There's a lot that I know didn't make it for you. <laughs> like my next one. Obviously. This one is... Is such a weird film, and I know, um, I believe James Bollinger said that you did not like uh, The Lighthouse because creeped him I out think or something, you right? didn't like, you also said you didn't like The Witch, which was his last movie, I haven't seen that one, but I thought this was just super weird and super funny and just, it's so horrific also. What I, I like, don't know, what it's I, so weird. What I like about our buddy James there. It's also filmed like an old movie. Yeah. What I like about our buddy James there is he is the most understanding person I think we've ever talked to in the channel or in person about other people's movie opinions. He's always just like, you do you, you like it, you like it, you don't like it, you don't like it. I, I try like to be movie. more like that in person. With you, I don't care because I can shit all over your opinions. My opinions are bad. But like when but I'm at work and that. someone's like, oh, I don't like Jaws, I'm like, I don't, I try not to be like, what? And I'm like, okay. I don't like Jaws. Yeah, Zen never. hates Jaws, apparently. There's no war in it. They just fight a shark. It's not enough of a war. Which is for the him. best war in the world. Man versus shark? You kidding me? How you, how's a man gonna fight a shark in the water? Makes no sense. Papa it's got knows. teeth, it's got fins, it's got gills. You are gonna fight it with an oar? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Don't get me started on this. Can I go? Yeah. Number eight. That wasn't a real argument. Yeah, I, know. For me. I know. I know. Uh, number eight is Man versus Shark, you fucking serious? I'll finish the video without him. <laughs> Number eight is Alita Battle Angel. It was really good. I'm so glad it's actually finally getting a sequel. Though it's probably pushed back now. You know, I don't even think it was in production right now. Is it finally? Did they announce it? I didn't they think it was it ever going to get a sequel. Sure. Yeah, I, I saw I'm it pretty sure it was back. just James Cameron going, I'll make it eventually. The problem is what I've talked to a lot of people about this movie is no one was interested in it because they didn't understand it. Everyone at work was like, but yeah, then people saw it was like, oh, that's fine. It's really, yeah. Everyone at work was like, oh, yeah, I never saw it because it just didn't look like something I would be into. I, I remember, didn't know what it was. I was like, I didn't know what it was, but it was incredible. I remember when this came out, yeah. a lot of people on the internet were like, well, you, you shouldn't go see Captain Marvel. You should go Alita, see Alita because she's an actual good female superhero. It's like, But they're both good movies. <laughs> also, I think Captain Marvel's a better movie. Oh, I didn't know anything about it. I remember just... Also, I think it'll leave as real. My goodness. I think I just kind of watched the trailer and went, yeah, okay, I'll yeah. see that. and went in and saw... That was how it was with Bloodshot, which you... you The reasons I saw it was why you thought it lo you didn't like it. Because I was like, I, I watched it and went, man, the CG looks really good. I'm excited to see this. And we were walking in the theater and went, it looks horrible. I was like, what? Like, the scene where he gets his face shot off? That, <laughs> that was okay. I paused yeah. in the trailer and went, I'm seeing that. That, that was good. Yeah. That's good. Um, so which, that's the best thing in the movie. Why show it in the trailer? <laughs> Alright. Remember the part in Alita when Christoph Waltz Spoiler. had the giant hammer yep. and it was like rocket power and he's like <laughs> Remember the sport where they like go up walls with <laughs> balls or whatever? Ridiculous. Let's make that movie. And up. it's like forty minutes of the movie. Alita Bat Alita Battle Angel 2, Walls and Balls. Number seven. Yeah. This one's gonna surprise you. Yeah. I have Missing Link, directed by Chris really? Butler. It was good? I loved this movie. Like I watched it and just, I was truly wowed. It's beautiful looking, It's I like the colors, I like the story, it's super funny and just heartwarming, and the jokes are amazing, and I love the voice casting, and it's just one of the best animated movies I've seen in a long, long time, and it was just phenomenal. You should really watch it, this is one you would love. I, I remember being interested in it, we just didn't see it. Yeah. 
No one saw it in theaters. Oh. It bombed. But it's very good. I'm glad it got an Oscar nomination. Number seven. That's a teaser for you. Pow. It's Knives Out. Nothing to do with Number guns. Number seven. Number seven. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good movie. I think we did our own review of this, maybe? Yeah, we definitely did. Because we, we went to a premiere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so go watch that. I, I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen, like I saw it recently because it's a new movie. Yeah. But I don't remember. Like I remember all of it, but I have a trouble putting those words into. I think it's because I reviewed it so much at work. Like every new person, because we saw it early. Yeah. And I forgot that people couldn't see it yet. Yeah. So every new person was. Yeah, because remember people were telling us that they were like, yeah, I heard Knives Out's coming out, and we're like, what? We saw that yeah. like a month ago. It's the same time we had with the Hitman's Bodyguard. We yeah. know the, the Knives Out was only like a week. That was only a week. Okay. Hitman's Bodyguard was like three weeks. Yeah. So three, people were like, oh, people, critics are raving about Hitman's Bodyguard. We're like, yeah, we've been for three. Oh, right. But it's like <laughs> Knives Out. Remember we, we had to sign, we had to say that uh, they made us not be allowed to talk about it after the theater. Remember? Like we had a, we had a, you could talk to the lady with the clipboard, yeah. but they were like, you can't talk about it as you leave. Yeah. Well, like Knives Out, I, everyone at work is like, oh, I might go see that when it comes out. I'm like, it comes out, and then I'd be like, "Oh, I saw it. I had a premiere." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, okay. How was it?" And I tell them. So I told good. every individual person at work how good it was, and I'm just I'm worn out of talking about it. So go watch the review because I think that's the thing. <laughs> and number six, yeah. I have Shazam, oh. directed by David F. Sandberg. I just want one of our movies to match. <laughs> well, you said that you're like, "Oh, probably none of mine will be in here." Well, there's a one Shazam. Yeah, well, I want them to match. <laughs> Well, Shazam is tied with The Dark Knight for being my favorite DC movie of all time. I loved Shazam. Just outright loved it. I loved the casting, Dark the Knight's character. I just loved everything about it. I don't think it had any flaws. Dark Knight's better. Dark Knight's probably better. Yeah. But I just really love Shazam. And I was going into it with thinking, like, you know, well, maybe I won't like it as much or whatever. You know, I had my reservations. Because the trailer didn't sell it for me. I even did a trailer reaction. You can go check that out. No, didn't you take it down? No, it's just copyright. Oh, okay. Yeah, they... My number six is Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, that's not even on my list. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. You like that more than Endgame? I haven't said Endgame yet. Oh, did you not? No. no I did. Yeah, you said Endgame. <laughs> uh, I thought this was pretty good. Uh, a lot of it, I, I, st I the first one's like my favorite MCU film. It was really good, but I love the first one. And a lot of it is kind of a dud for me until uh, I remember the scene from when he makes the suit in the plane to the rest of the movie is like perfect for me. I think after that is the Mysterio illusion scene. No, it's before. The Mysterio illusion scene is the best thing that I've ever seen in the MCU. See, the reason this isn't in my top movies is because I thought some of the CGI was really wonky and far from home. And I didn't like it as much as Foam Coming. My favorite Spider-Man villain got a shout-out, though. So, like, happy about that. My favorite Superman villain will never be in a Spider-Man movie ever. No, I just said favorite Superman I villain just would said never I be in a Spider-Man yeah. movie. Um, <laughs> Who's your favorite Spider-Man villain? Rocket Raccoon? Racer. Rocket Racer? Rocket Racer. You don't think they'll ever do it? No. I think I think there's a lot of... Ronnie Radke. I think... This is really... No, I think Robert Racer, Rock Racer will definitely be in the MCU. They probably won't go the villain arc. I think he'll be a supporting character and probably... He has to be a villain because he's the son of Reggie or who's the guy that... Robbie. Robbie? Who is the guy that Peter works with? <laughs> the Daily Bugle. Oh, uh... Robbie. Robinson. Something. Robbie Robinson? Maybe. I don't know. He Rocket Racer's his son. I didn't know and that. And so he becomes a he like he goes into the wrong group of people and they he's a criminal. See, yeah, they and then do a little. And then Spider Man, that. you know, changes him into a hero. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But they won't make him the villain of the movie. They'll okay, probably yeah. do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He'll be a supporting okay. character in some show. And number right. five, I have Knives Out by Ryan Johnson. I really liked this. It was the a fun caper with like, some of the best acting I've seen all year. I thought that was Daniel me. Craig and Chris Evans, two standout performances for me. I thought that number was going to be the closest we had to a match, and now I know that... In the I couldn't believe you put it at seven. You must have some bangers coming. Yeah, I got some bangers coming. Well, some <laughs> stuff you didn't consider bangers, but uh, I got some bangers coming. Okay. Can I go? Yeah. Number five is the Peanut Butter Falcon. What? The movie's incredible. Number five? Number five. It took... Yeah, I know. It was higher, and then I... I like, thought our number one is going to be the same. Is your Peanut Butter Falcon? Uh... Yeah, it was higher, and then I was like, I gotta put it down. It's mainly because I didn't see, like, the first four minutes. I was like... You should go back. Yeah, I should. 
is really good, but I couldn't. And you're going to be really disappointed when you find out what's in between <laughs> now, the next four. Because I'm pretty sure I know what your one is now. Because they're Baners. Uh, my one switched so many times. I think I know what it is now. Uh, there are so many Baners for me personally, but I know you. I don't think the next, at wow. least maybe, at least two aren't on your top list, but maybe the next three aren't on your top list. And number four. I have Dolomite is My Name, directed by Craig Brewer. This was hilarious, and it's a return to form for Eddie Murphy, with a lot of cameos, and it's just hilarious. It is just, it's very, very funny. And it's a biopic, which, you know, always, uh, always Oscars. I'm sick of them. I hate them. They're usually pretty good. The, but we've had the best biopic anymore, nothing can top what? it. Jobs! Jobs isn't even that good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm processing you being disappointed me for the next five minutes. Uh, number four for me, the fourth best movie of 2019 is Stuber. Uh, I saw this twice in theaters. I Better go than back. the Peanut Butter Falcon. I know, that I know. That movie had themes. I know. And the only Stardust I've ever done. I know Stuber is just so goddamn hilarious. And it's only going to get worse off from here. I thought Stuber was funny, but not you love I that for love some that reason. movie so, so much. Is that your Big Trouble of 2019? No, because I couldn't watch it as much as I watched Big Trouble. If I had a Big Trouble... Because it's not that good? <laughs> no, because just the jokes would get sour, whereas Big Trouble is the most perfect, just... I hated uh, the ending of Stuber. I won't spoil it, but I hated Big it. Big Trouble is the most unstale, perfect movie that there is. Number three, I put Parasite, directed by Bong Joon-ho. This is one I watched two nights ago, and wow, fantastic movie. I totally understand why it won Best Picture. You uh, made fun of the way they cut food. Yeah, I thought that was funny. They use scissors to cut food, but it's because they're poor people. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, or two better match. It was very, very good. It's darkly funny and just weird and horrific and just very, very good movie. I understand why people really like it because it was fantastic. Number three, this is going to become a real shock to you. Yeah. Uh, number three for me is Murder Mystery with Adam Sandler what? and Jennifer Aniston. What? That is so middle of the road. It was hilarious. I, I can't believe I put in about so. Stuber. Um, it's, when you were talking about Uncut Gems. You didn't direct that. Mike, or Kyle Newichek. Oh, wow. Well, it's a NASCAR driver? No, he's a workaholic. No, oh, sounds like a NASCAR driver. Do you know that I found this out today. She's also in one of the worst movies of all time. What? She is Grandma Dolores and That's My Boy, which means Adam Sandler fucked her. Oh. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's a bad movie. Uh, should I, go I love on? that movie. Am I going on? No, I just have my three. You have to say your two. And Get number two. Match. It's not, because you haven't seen it. And number two, I put Ford v. Ferrari, directed by James Mangold. This movie took me for a race from start to finish, pun intended. It took me around the track and just, it's fantastic, it's beautifully directed, it was a true, it's based on a true story that I did not know anything about, and it's just some of the best performances I've ever seen from Matt Damon and Christian Bale. You don't I, like Matt Damon, so. I don't know, he's really good actually. He's in a <laughs> lot of good movies. A lot of you hated him. Till Martian. I never really hated him, I just thought he was kind of like Matt Damon. Did you see Downsizing? I used to not like Ben Affleck What's that called, Downsizing? Downsizing? No, I never saw that one. So I liked Suburbicon. He was good in that. Yeah, I gotta see that. But yeah, if you look at Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's career, like starting at Goodwill Hunting, that's where they both, you know, got their big yeah. push. If you look, you start there and then look at their career, it's like Matt Damon's like up here in the high, like Rotten Tomatoes yeah. range, where Ben Affleck's like. Yeah, that's because he did Jiggly. Yeah, <laughs> it's just his movies are really low yeah. compared to Matt Damon. His new one looks no good, so. What? The, the way, way back? That looks amazing. Are you kidding me? It's so bad. Looks incredible. No. Oh, um, I want to see that so bad. I really thought it was going to be a match, and it's bonkers that's not on your top 14. And this was at my number one until the last minute before, in like the last second before we filmed. It's like, i got to switch it real quick. Okay. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh, The yeah. movie's incredible, and you well, didn't even put it in your top 14. Because all the ones in my top 14 are five-star movies. Yeah, <laughs> you think this isn't good. I gave that four stars on uh, Stardust. It's incredible. Yeah. It's a really good movie. It's really good. I'm the only person in the world that didn't give this five stars. Because wasn't it half on Round Tomatoes like a 98%? For, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm in the 2%. <laughs> no, I, I technically am in the 98 because yeah. my review still would be positive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
I did think it's really Why good. Why did Joaquin Phoenix win an Oscar when this exists? Yeah, it's this is the, baffling. the best Tom Hanks performance we've ever seen. No, you're thinking about it, but think like Tom Hanks, he's great in a lot, and he but he always kind of just plays Tom Hanks. Yeah, see, you Captain know? Phillips might. Yeah, but you can no because there's Tom Hanks in that. You yeah. can tell what Tom Hanks is doing to alter himself for all his roles. Like even Forrest Gump, there's Tom Hanks in that. This is him just embodying. There's Tom Hanks in this. This is though. him embodying Mr. Rogers. This is the modern day man on the moon. I thought this. Would... I I knew this was gonna be your second. It was almost my first. But then when you, your, your fifth was not your first, I went, okay, I know what your first is. <laughs> this is the modern day man on the moon. You're it's crazy. So good. You're crazy. We know you're one. You don't need to look. My number one is The Peanut Butter Falcon, directed by Tyler Nilsson and Michael Schwartz. How is this not at... I genuinely... We watched this and I was like, that's the best thing You didn't I've even seen. see the end in. I, you left... I, I finished it on my own. That's why yeah, I did my Stardust. Yeah. I I explained this to Nathan because he borrowed it. Yeah. I was like, dude, it's probably the best movie I've seen in like the last decade. It's amazing. I would give this more than 100% of Rotten Tomatoes if I could. Like, it's... Yeah, it's really good. It's incredible and just moving and powerful and just... It's got themes... The cinematography is incredible. Uh, it's got that guy that. Uh, <laughs> it's got Thomas Hayden Church. He well, was no, in Sideways. Guy, it's got that guy that if you want to catch 21, well, he'll catch 22. He get Jake's the Snakes yeah. in it. You want to play Aces and Aces? He's got eight, two of those too. You want to play 21? I got 22. You want to play Blackjack? I got two of those too. Uh, are you done? Yeah. Okay, number one is Avengers Endgame. Yeah, it's I The know most it. important movie that has ever existed, I think. At least in my entire life, it is the most important movie. Uh, I was going to use an analogy, and it would not be good. I, I think I, if I, listen, gun to my head, yeah. I had Avengers Endgame or Peanut Butter Falcon, and I had to choose one movie for the entire world to watch as the most important, I would choose the Peanut Butter Falcon. <laughs> no, it's, no, you're wrong. It's what, 12 years of lead up? Not, no, it's, it's 11. It's the, high, 11. it's the highest grossing movie of all time. Yeah, well, I think the Peanut Butter Falcon showed a billion dollars. Why didn't a billion people go see yeah, that movie? it was an indie film. <laughs> exactly. Because it's Shia LaBeouf. And if you look at the last three of these movies that we've done, yeah. I have weird choices for my favorite of the year. My third best is Murder Mystery. 20, 2019, my favorite is Peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah. 2018, I had Sorry to Bother You. 2017 was I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. Yeah. You had a great movie, you had an awful, awful film, and you had a movie I haven't seen yet, but I've heard is good from you. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Do you remember Assholes? Yeah, Assholes is really <laughs> funny. Oh my god, I think about Let's that Let's not talk about Assholes. Let's talk about Avengers Endgame, the most important movie in cinema history. Uh, you know, obviously I wanted it to be highest It's not my favorite and... MCU movie. I, it's not my favorite MCU movie. It's the most important film ever, though. I don't think so, because it doesn't... It's not... Black Panther's more important. Than Avengers Endgame. I don't know. We've had black superhero films before. But if you're looking at like a cultural we standpoint, had Steel. we had like, Spawn. Spawn's bad. a black guy, right? They're bad. <laughs> Blade. The first we have Blade. Four blades. The first Blade is the, the cl Blade Two. Maybe is the like. Well, Blade Two. Have you, have you ever listened to James' review of Blade Two? He did a no. video. It's like top ten movies he remembers being good, but he might be the only one or something. Okay. And Blade Two is on. Actually, I don't think you ever did watch this video. Because I remember being like, "Did you watch that?" You went, "No, I'll get around to it." And then you never did. But he talks about Blade Two. He's like, "I remember Blade Two being the best movie when they came out." And I watched it recently. I went, "Wait, what?" And he's like, "All the things I remember being great turns out they're bad." <laughs> huh. But Avengers Endgame is way more important than Black Panther. I think. I disagree. Black Panther was the first MCU movie to get Oscar nomination. Yeah, and the only reason this didn't because they didn't push it. They didn't push it. Yeah, they said that they didn't want they, it because Art Robert Downey Jr. was everyone wanted uh, best they, no, actor. And they, the stupid thing about that, I've ranted about this to myself hey. before, is that Robert Downey Jr.'s movie was Infinity War, whereas this is Chris Evans' movie. Yeah, yeah, he is a way they, better performer. They sent Avengers Endgame in for the Oscar for your consideration. It didn't oh. get cho or chosen. Well, still, Black Panther. It's same with Uncut Gems. The Academy, yeah, yeah, they, they, they ousted touch. that. Yeah. Still, this is better than Black Panther. I don't... I honestly disagree. Black, Black Panther, Panther is, to me, the greatest MCU movie ever made. Over Winter Soldier? Yes. No. Black Panther 
is under, I mean, I think this is one of the best movies in the MCU, but Black Panther is under Incredible Hulk to me. What? Yeah, because I love Incredible Get out Hulk. of town. That was my third of 2019. Yeah, I think, to me, I don't like the cast of Black Panther. You know yeah. how I feel about Michael B. Jordan. You he don't like any actors. Down. I don't want to like everyone. Everyone's bad. No one's bad. Yeah, everyone's a terrible person in Hollywood. People right, are bad. let's wrap this up. Quick outro. Like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell. Uh, you can follow you. me at BatchRacio1 on Instagram, Twitter, and Stardust. You can uh, follow me on uh, Instagram at StrayJTheJerk and on Twitter at IdiotDial. Check out my Stardust at Lexdial and Twitch.tv backslash Lexdial. You can follow the channels The Collective on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Punk Rock Blues. <laughs> and you can pledge to our Patreon at Patreon.com slash Punk Rock Blues. This actually smells really good. Where was that? It was right there. Maybe it's mine? There? I haven't used mine. There or there? It was here. I think. Oh, then this is mine. I it's not labeled, though. Yours is labeled this on the dryer. Is... I don't even use mine. If mom's pods are down here, I just throw two in. I don't care. I don't you use two them. pods? Yeah, you wanted the start oh and the one at the end. Yeah. You're crazy. I got a lot. You know how much laundry I do. Have you seen all, all the right. loads I did? Say our page. I said our Patreon, didn't I? Pledge yeah. our Patreon at patreon.com slash blues if you can. Yeah, it'd be uh, really helpful because the coronavirus is hitting us hard. I got laid off. Yeah.